What's up guys, it's your boy Goblins, and I'm back talking about Destiny stuff. Uh, today I actually want to cover both those live streams that happened recently. Um, the one that happened this week, talking about the Quarter Oryx, and the one that happened last week, which discussed, uh, Strike the Dreadnought, featuring John Cena! Now I found that these streams didn't have as much details as, for example, the Tower stream did. Um, and that's because, of course, it is... They're actually, like, playing the game and whatnot. Um, so for Strike the Dreadnought, Mr. Fruit, Cosmo, and Nas here all played Strike the Dreadnought. And I'm more so just showed off that Strikes now have light raid mechanics, which is really impressive. So, as you can see, you know, you see this boss in particular move in and out of the map often, which is really cool. Um, and that's something that we don't really see. They're no longer bullet sponges, they actually, they actually have their own personalities nowadays, apparently. And, according to Bungie, these bosses on strikes are actually gonna be a little bit more based off RNG, whereas where they appear, what they're gonna do, and so on and so forth, which is really cool. So that's something, of course, that, once again, we haven't really seen. Um, we, we're very used to bullet sponge bosses. Up until the Tank and King, so a lot, a lot less of that, which is pretty fucked sweet. So once again, I'm pretty stoked for that, I'm not gonna lie. Also during this stream, they revealed something called Relics, which are essentially items that are equipable to your character, but not visible. These items essentially do things for you, add passive buffs, act buffs, whatever it might be. Which, once again, is similar to like your Cloak, Mark, or Bond, or your Ghost Shells, essentially, that actually do different types of things for you. They also briefly detailed the new subclasses, like, in very quite specific detail, where they went over, like, every perk and everything, which I would like to discuss in a separate video, um, and kind of go over that, you know, once again separately, because that is something that was, like, eight minutes long for them to discuss. So originally, I was just gonna be like, yeah, this is what it is, and here's them explaining it, but no, we'll, we'll go into detail in a little bit, um, in a different video here. And I'll get that covered, so, yeah. And then they, of course, talked about swords a little bit more, obviously, the, uh, the dude had a, a sword, and... That was, that was, that was a thing, you know, that was, that was someone's jam, was the sword, so. And then this week we talked about the Court of Oryx. Now, this is actually really cool, I like the Court of Oryx a lot. So Bungie this time for this stream brought in Urk, the great Urk, Bobby Womack, or no, Ben, sorry, Ben, <laughs> Ben Womack, and Laced Up Lauren. Laced Up Lauren? I, I, who is that? And in this truth, they once again talked about swords. <laughs> but this sword was an exotic sword and had like crazy solar attacks and you could short you can people like you were can arrive from Street Fighter, which is pretty fucking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie about that. That's, that's cool. Yeah. So the Court of Oryx essentially is just patrolling Dreadnought. Um, and it is a massive amount of public events that leads you to more public events that you can trigger whenever you'd like to. Now, because these are public events, random people can join you at any point in time. And apparently you can have up to like 9 or 10 guardians in one go because people are just kind of wandering into it. So it'll add this whole different dynamic of patrol to it, just like I, what I believe patrol was originally supposed to be and their intentions for it, was just a bunch of guardians coming together and killing stuff. It's kind of like those, uh, when you're playing patrol and you get those big, like, uh, the uh, things that fall from the sky that could potentially kill you. Yeah, those things. It's kind of like the same idea as that. Everyone kind of swarms to it. But this is all self-inflicted. You essentially trigger these patrol events with some form of item that an enemy actually drops. I want to believe that they're called runes of some sort, and as you progress through these public events, they actually essentially power up and let you do better, bigger missions as a public event, if that makes sense. You just go up to these like weird little statues and touch and touch them right in the... Right in the part where the, the, uh, they meet the ground or whatever, and you put a ruin there, and boom! Boom! Public event started. And once again, all ra ra and once again, random guardians from all wakes of the Dreadnought can go ahead and join you in this mission, which is really cool. It's super impressive for what it is. You're gonna get a lot of variety in there, it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. It's gonna be doing, like, like a light raid type mission, for example, um, but with a bunch of other people that are just completely random in their own fire teams. That's really cool, in my opinion. Now, there is a cooldown on runes which they show, which is called Summoner's Exhaustion, and that's more so just kind of to, like, let other people go ahead and activate one of these public events for themselves. Because for the person that actually activates the public event, they get better rewards compared to everyone else. Meaning it makes sense for someone to kind of go one at a time for these public events because, you know, you, you want, kind of want a nice base for everyone to get gear, essentially. Like, I'm not going to constantly keep dropping runes and be like, HA! I'm getting the best gear and you ain't. Now for the guys that are participating, of course, you still get gear and upgraded ruins of sorts. It's just not to the degree of someone that is, of course, adding the ruin to it. Now this also helps, of course, because as people join you, maybe something they have to get done and they personally don't find the rune or have the rune for whatever it is they need to do, but they can't do because they can't find it, but you do. So they'll just hop into yours and boom, there you go. What if it's like a daily, or like a quest of some sort, or some sort of event or something, and you can just go ahead, hop in, and boom. 
Now, as they showed as well, these bosses kind of have their own mechanics. For example, there was a knight that got hit by a Cursed Thrall, and that was the only way you could do damage to it is after it got hit by a Cursed Thrall. Another was a Cabal that was, of course, absorbed by the Taken Mind of some sort, and it could actually only take damage if you killed all of its troops and all that stuff. So it's, it's kind of, once again, very light raid-type mechanics or strike-type mechanics in Taken King, just applied to both public events and strikes, which is completely new for us. I like it a lot, actually. As Bungie said, Destiny Patrol is no longer going to be easy mode. And one last thing to mention is that, of course, it looks like we do have a new upgradable material called Worm Spore. Um, once again, just sort of looks like, of course, a general upgrading material. And you get it off, like, these weird, like, dead thrall that are kind of around the map, which is kind of interesting, actually. I like it. So I think that's all I really wanted to cover and talk about, is kind of just, like, what they talked about in the live streams that I found that was really important, really, really important, actually. Um, and that's really what it all was. Of course, there was a lot of information to kind of fill in the gaps, and it was quite entertaining, entertaining to watch. If you guys would like to watch the entire thing for yourselves, I highly, highly recommend you check it out down in the description. Uh, I got the links to both live streams, which is just essentially on Bungie's, uh, YouTube account. But I wanted to go over the, just like the very basic details and the important stuff. If you found this useful or useless or whatever, thank you for, for watching. And I hope you at least kind of enjoyed it and found it kind of entertaining. Once again, I would like to go into the new subclasses a little bit more into detail in a separate video. Um, I just wanted to do this video kind of, to kind of catch up with you guys because I have been really busy with the last week. I've just been like, man, I've been so tired and just like napping, you know? I'm just like the nap king. It's just been like... It's just been one hell of a week, and that's all I can really tell you guys, really. It's just, it's, there's been a lot of go stuff going on, and I'm just very thankful to be back doing my content and uh, getting caught up with you guys, which is what I like to see, and it makes me feel really good. So, thank you. Thank you guys for enjoying this video. Thank you for listening to my nonsense. Yeah! Hopefully it was kind of, hopefully it was kind of helpful. Now, if you guys believe I missed anything or missed any big details, please let me know in the description there. Drop a comment for me. And uh, that's all I really got to talk about for today, guys. As I always say, drop a like for your boy, God! We're going to be back here with more Destiny content shortly. So take it easy, guys. Have a general good, and I'll see you all then. Peace out! Pass. Alright, hold the phone for a second. What does that mean? What What does that even mean? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Is the redheaded community guy's name Eric or Urk? It's a mix. It's Urk. Urk? Yeah. Redheaded guy confirmed Urk. Do you guys remember that scene in The Return of the Jedi with Speeder?